Hello and welcome back to another full step by step PC build guide. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the latest case from Montech, the XR Wood. If you see any parts you like, you'll find links to everything I've used in the description. So let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our case's tempered glass side panel, there's a notch at the back you can get your hand behind and pop it out from the top, and then you just need to lift it up and away. And to remove our other side panel, there's two captive thumb screws at the back which we need to loosen. And once they've been loosened, we're simply able to pull the panel backwards and lift away. And if we take a look at the back of this panel, you'll notice we've got a magnetically attached dust filter indicating that we're going to be able to side mount fans on the case. So we take a look at our case's front panel, you can see where the XR wood name comes from with the wooden panels at the top and at the bottom of the front panel. And our front panel can simply be pulled off from the bottom. With the front panel removed, you can see that Montech have installed three 120mm PWM ARGB fans at the front of the case, although if you prefer it is possible to mount up to two 140mm fans. In the box with the case, we get a magnetic dust filter for the front. So I'm just going to slide it into place at the front, and then we can replace the front panel. We've got another 120mm PWM ARGB fan pre-installed at the rear of the case, although if you prefer it is possible to mount up to a 140mm fan or radiator. The case's only other radiator mounting slot is at the top where you can fit up to a 360mm radiator. It is important to say that a 280mm radiator isn't supported. If you want to go with fans at the top, it's up to three 120 or two 140 millimeter fans. On the side of the case, it's up to two 120 millimeter fans, while on the bottom of the case, it's up to three 120 millimeter fans. You can see we do have screw holes at the bottom, so what you're simply going to do is set your fans into place. Then you're going to use the included long radiator screws to go down through your fans and screw them into the bottom of the case. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to ATX in size. You can see there's no additional cutouts, so back connector motherboards aren't going to be supported. And if you want to go with a CPR cutter, the maximum height supported is up to 175 millimeters. You can see at the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal PCIe expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 420 millimeters. Moving to the rear of the case, you can see that all our case cables are managed in the middle with two Velcro straps. We've got two rubber grommets over to the right hand side of the motherboard, and cable routing space looks to be adequate. Going ahead and freeing up all our case cables, it's good to see that all four of our pre-installed case fans are already connected up together. So there's just one PWM and one 3-pin 5 volt ARGB connector to plug into our motherboard. And it's also good to see we've got a single cable for our front panel connectors. We've got a dedicated 2.5 inch drive mounting bracket behind our motherboard. All you're going to have to do is remove the thumb screw. You're then going to be able to tilt the bracket out and lift away. You're then going to simply set your drive on the bracket, screw it in from the back before returning it to the case. And you see we've got a hard drive cage at the bottom. So we take a look in from the bottom, you'll see it's held on with two thumb screws, but as well there's two different positions we're going to be able to install the hard drive cage in. You can go ahead and remove the two thumb screws, and then we can pull the hard drive cage forward and lift it up to remove it. So on top of the hard drive cage you're able to fit either a two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive. So simply set the drive on top and then screw it in from underneath. While in the drive cage itself, you're able to fit a three and a half inch drive, and you're simply going to screw that in with three screws at each side. Remember, if you want to install a drive at the top, install it first, because once the three and a half inch drive is in the drive tray, you're not going to be able to secure anything to the top. And you'll notice I'm not pointing out which screws you need to secure the drives because they all come in bags labeled with their function. So SSD or motherboard screws, hard drive screws, We've got standoff insertion and removal tools. We've got loads of cable ties, Velcro cable straps, a cleaning cloth and spare clips. So Montag do the accessory bag really well. Our case supports full-sized ATX parcel lines up to a maximum length of 230 millimeters. And again, we've got a magnetically attached dust filter over our power supplies intake. We are now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're going to be installing our CPU, the bracket for our CPU killer, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To open our socket cover, we're going to push the lever down and out, bring the clip all the way to the centre of the motherboard, and then we can open the socket cover up. Then holding our CPU by the edges, we can lower it gently down into the socket. We'll give it a little wiggle from side to side and up and down to check it's sitting correctly. And once we're happy it is, we can go ahead and close the socket cover down. As we close the lever, the black bit of plastic will pop off and we're going to put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. First step in installing the bracket for our CPU cutter is to remove the stock clips. They're each held on with two screws. Then you're going to want to screw one of the AMD bracket screws into each corner, and it's the end with the bigger threads that's going to go into the motherboard. Then we can set one of our AMD brackets at the top and at the bottom, and then we can put a thumb screw onto each corner. To access our M.2 SSD slots, we're going to need to remove this heatsink, so we're going to push this lever up. We can then tilt the heatsink up and lift away. 
So I'm going to be installing a Gen 5 SSD, so we're going to need to install it in the top slot because the bottom two slots are Gen 4 slots. So we've got some plastic protection over the heat pad to remove, and we're also going to need to remove the plastic protection from the heat sink. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the slot. There's a little clip here, we just need to pull it back, and it's then going to hold our drive in place, and we can then replace our heat sink. We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from our CPU, so we'll go ahead and open the clips on these slots. We can then line the RAM up with the slot, and once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. And then it's exactly the same thing with our second stick. Next, we can set the motherboard into the case, lined it up with the standoffs at the back, and then we'll secure the motherboard into place using any of the motherboard screws from the case accessory box. Next, we're going to want to get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left-hand side of the motherboard. So we can bring the cable in through the cutout. We'll go ahead and line it up with a header and push it into place. We've got two RGB headers down the bottom of the motherboard, but I'm actually struggling to get enough stretch in this cable to bring our RGB cable through and plug it in. So the reason for this is the end RGB cable is coming from our front fans, and it would be much better if it came from this rear fan. There would be enough stretch on it. So what I'm going to do is unplug our rear fan. I'm going to take the daisy chainable connector off it, and then I'm going to plug the cable coming from our front fans into it, and then we'll put the plastic cover on the spur connector. So that now means we're not going to have any problem reaching the header on the motherboard. Okay, so we'll pass the RGB cable through and get it plugged in. And then we've got two system fan headers here, so we'll bring the PWM cable coming from our fans and get it plugged in. Our front panel connectors are going to go into the pins on the left side of this header here. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. Our USB Type-A cable is going to go into this right angle connector here. So we'll bring our cable through the cutout, line it up with a header and push it into place. And then we've got our USB Type-C header here. So we'll bring our cable through the cutout, line it up and push it into place. So this brings us on to our power supply and I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables that we're going to need. So I've plugged in a 24 pin motherboard cable, two 8 pin EPS cables to write additional power to your CPU and a 12 volt high power cable to power our graphics card. So we can go ahead and slide the power supply into the bottom of the case with the fan facing down the way. And we'll secure the power supply into place with four of the power supply screws from the case accessory box. At the top of the motherboard, we've got both an 8 and a 4 pin EPS power connector. So we'll go ahead and bring our EPS cables in through the cutout and get them plugged in. And our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll bring the cable through the cutout. We'll go ahead and line it up with the header and push into place. And then we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. So it's good to see that our fans come pre-installed on the radiators, that's one last thing to do. So the only thing we're going to have to do before installing our I.O. in the case is replace the Intel bracket for the AMD one. So we can remove the plastic protection, and we're just going to have to take care that we don't damage the pre-installed thermal paste. So our bracket's held on with two screws at each side. So then we're going to be able to slit our AMD bracket into place on top, and then we can secure it into place using the screws. You'll notice that the plastic protection won't go back on, so just take care not to damage the thermal paste. So once we set our I.O. into place at the top of the case, access to the headers at the top is going to be limited. So I'm just going to pass the cable coming from our fans through to the back, and then it's this grey fan header that is our CPU fan header, so we'll bring the cable coming from the fans back through, and plug it into place. And we've also got an ARGB header at the top of the motherboard here, so we'll bring the ARGB cable through as well, and get it plugged in. Then we can set our I.O. up into place at the top of the case, and we'll secure things into place at the top using 12 short radiator screws. And at this stage we can replace our top dust filter. Next we need to line our pump up with the bracket beneath, and then we just need to tighten up the two thumb screws. I'm just going to pass the cables coming from our pump through to the back, and if the logo on the pump isn't straight don't worry it is rotatable, and then we can peel the plastic protection from it. Not the easiest to show you, but our pump header is just here, so I'm going to bring the PWM cable coming from our pump back through and get it plugged into the header. There's a DC chain to RGB connector coming from the cable we've already plugged into the motherboard from our fans, so we'll plug the RGB cable from our pump into it. We're now ready to install our graphics card, and we're going to need to remove the first, second, and third expansion slot covers from the top. To get access to them, we're going to need to remove the cover. The 
Before we set the graphics card into the case, I just want to install our GP support bracket. So first thing, we've got this little bracket here, and then I'm gonna take two screws with a washer on it to secure it into place. So I'm just gonna put that loosely, first of all, so we've got a wee bit of slide on it. Then we can set this other bracket into place, and we'll secure it with a thumb screw. We've got this little foot that we can slide onto the bottom, and now we've got everything connected up. I'm just gonna push the bracket forward, and we'll tighten it up. And in terms of installing things, what I'm gonna do is just loosen this thumb screw here, We'll pull the bracket up to its highest position and tighten it. Then once we've installed the graphics card, we can lower this down to where it's supporting our graphics card and we'll secure it using this thumb screw. To open the clip on our top PCIe slot, there's a little button over here we just need to press. We can then insert our graphics card into the case. We'll go ahead and line it up with a slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure and it's gonna clip into place. And then we'll secure it into place with the three screws we've just removed. Next, I'm just gonna loosen the screw in our GPU support bracket. The foot will fall down and attach to the bottom of the case magnetically. And then all I'm gonna do is lift our graphics card up to where I'm happy it's straight, and then we'll tighten the bracket up again. Then we can bring our 12 volt high power cable through the cutout at the bottom. We'll line the cable up with our graphics card and push into place. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again. Okay, so that's the build complete and looking absolutely stunning. You'll notice I've gone ahead and set the PC up off camera. If you don't know how to do any of that, I've made another video that covers everything you're gonna to need to know. So you'll find a link to that video in the description. In terms of our temperatures, our Ryzen 7 9700X idled at 41 degrees and reached a maximum of 63 degrees during a 10 minute IDA 64 stability test. The Aorus Master 5070Ti idled at 29 degrees and reached a maximum of 61 degrees under load. In terms of noise, we had average noise levels of 35 decibels at idle and 41 decibels under load. So the Montec XR Wood is available from today, both in black and white with an MSRP of $79.99. So what are my thoughts on the case? Well, starting off with the build experience, it was really good. And a big part of that is the fact that you've got four pre-installed case fans, so it really simplifies what you need to do. There is a few things to be careful of. Um, I think the first is be careful with the fan cables. They weren't able to reach the headers at the bottom left of the motherboard. And I did just need to change the order of how the ARGB cables were plugged in to allow it to do this. The other important thing is out of the box, the fan cables are stretching across the two side fan mounts where they are gonna be visible from the front. I did take a little bit of time and manage the cables carefully using a couple of cable ties. And I would recommend doing that if you're not going with side fans. Final thing to mention is cable routing space at the top is really quite limited. Once you put your I.O. at the top, it's a real struggle to plug anything into the top of your motherboard. So make sure you plug as many cables in as you can before you install your I.O. So in terms of the things I like about the case, well, the first thing I like is the price, less than $80 for a case that comes with four good PWM ARGB fans and a really good build quality throughout. We've got rubber grommets, we've got a really good case accessory bag with all the individual components labeled with their function. So in terms of things I didn't like about the case, I did think it could have done with a few extra centimeters at the top just to make the build experience that little bit easier. I would have liked to have seen a cover plate over towards the right hand side of the motherboard. I don't think those two fan mounting slots look great. And if you're not gonna be installing fans there, and the final thing I would like to have seen would have been a GPU support bracket. But given that the price of this case is less than $80, it offers absolutely brilliant value for money. And particularly if you like the aesthetic with the wood, this could well be the case for you. 
If you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.